Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben Parks, 225 marathoner and running coach. We've worked with a lot of athletes over the years and we get a lot of questions coming in here at the channel. And so we thought we'd put together a list of our most common running mistakes that we see people making and people asking for advice about. And of course, the solutions to those problems as well to help all of you guys out with your runnings. We've got nine of the top ones and a little special bonus one at the end, so stay tuned for that. Right, let's get this video done. One thing which we see all the time is people that aren't practicing in their race day kit and also not practicing their nutrition before their big race. Now what we mean by this is practicing in your shoes, your socks, your shorts, sports bra, singlet, whatever it is, your whole outfit that you want to be wearing on that start line. You need to be doing your long runs in it. You need to be doing your sessions in it and make sure it's all working well together. The same thing is also true with the nutrition. The nutrition you want to be taking round on the course, you need to make sure you have practiced with that. Now me and Sarah like Cis gels and Morton gels, and we always recommend checking out Xmiles, which is a great website here where you can just buy individual gels. Please, please start practicing with that in your sessions, in your long runs, how are you gonna carry it as you go round, get all of these things right. The golden rule is don't try the thing you're on race day. Obama get lots of new things for race day, but you need to practice with them in those months and weeks leading up to the race. Now, when people get in touch with us for coaching, of course, we look back through all of their training history. The biggest thing that we see is people doing so many of their runs at the same pace. They don't have a range of paces, which is why we made our pacing chart. You can download that for free. We'll link that down in the description. And of course, all of the training plans we sell on the website, we'll link those down below, have a wide variety of paces. So we need to know what it's like to be running at our 5K pace, our 10K pace, our threshold pace, our marathon pace, our easy run pace is the most important because so much of marathon training and half marathon training is done at that easy conversational pace. So we need to be learning to run at a wide variety of paces, but especially easy pace. The best way to do this, go out for a run with your friends, have a chat. It's conversational pace, nice and relaxed and easy. If you wanna get a heart rate monitor, keeping that sub 150 as a very basic rule, everyone will be slightly different, but yeah, you can calculate your heart rate zones as well. They're separate videos and we'll link to those down below. But yeah, get a wide variety of paces is so critical for running success. So when we look at a lot of people's cadence numbers, we tend to find is a little bit on the low side, around about sort of that 160, 165. We're always trying to aim for around about that 180 cadence mark. And also people might not be running with the best sort of form, maybe heel striking. So it's really good to try and improve our running form and our efficiency to cover the ground using as little energy as possible. So how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna improve things? Well, things like strides, so important little short bursts, of speed 10 20 seconds or so really good to put that into your routine and also hill reps it's quite hard to run up a hill with bad running form it gets you landing on that nice forefoot part of your foot helps increase your turnover as well as you go up and then finally doing things like drills things like high knees can be really good again to get that foot landing nicely under the center of mass and also getting a metronome as well setting it at 180 beats a minute running along as it clicks away will help increase that form and it help increase your cadence as well. So today's question of the day is what has been your biggest running mistake? And most importantly, how did you overcome it? Help out the community, let us know down in the comments and help share your knowledge of running as well. Right, back to the video. Right, moving on, let's have a quick chat about technology and our watches and our wrists and Strava and social media and things like that. Now, something I'm particularly passionate about is learning to run so much more on feel rather than what our gadgets and our gizmos are telling us to do all the time. Learning to adapt and react to what our body is telling us rather than what our watch knows. That watch, your watch does not know you anywhere near as well as what you do. So I'd really recommend every now and then just to take the watch off, just to cover it up, forget the pace, forget all of that sort of stuff and just go for a run on feel, nice and relaxed, and just do your training that way. This also goes with the whole comparison thing on Strava. We sometimes look at how our friends are going on there, and then we end up running a bit too fast because we wanna show off and get more kudos and things like that, and it can have a bit of a negative effect. Now, of course, they have some really big positive roles to play. I'm not talking about ditching this altogether. It's just learning to run a lot more on feel, 
and using Strava wisely and not being led into the hole, pushing your pace to try and get a little bit more kudos. Now, so many runners, when we look at their training, they just put the shoes on and head straight out the door. And when they get back, they get on the sofa and get on social media. So important to get yourself a pre and post run routine. An hour before you're gonna go out, have a little snack, just a little bar, bit of toast, something like that. Then about 10 to 15 minutes before you're going for running, nicely hydrated, a little sports drink or just some water, something like that. And then as you head out the door, get your dynamic stretches in. We've got some follow along videos linked down below for how to do your dynamic stretches. And then we're starting our run. First mile into our run, nice and easy. The first opening mile should be so relaxed, so much slower than our average pace for the whole run. Get the rest of the run done and then come back. We want to do some nice little bit of static stretching. Again, we've got a follow along video for that down below. Get something on board, rehydrate and get some food down as well in around about 30 minutes after your run. And then you can do all your social media, put your pictures on Strava and everything like that. One thing that we see so much is people, when they get injured, when they, something goes wrong and they need to stop running, they don't go and see a physio. Now, I do understand that physios tend to be a little bit on the expensive side. We don't always have that cash to be able to do that. But there's so many free resources out there. Me and Sarah both are always sending people to a YouTube channel called Bob and Brad that break down so many of the common running injuries and how to go about fixing them. And also they're really good we're telling you how to diagnose things as well. Now we'd always say, please go and see a physio, but if you can't afford it, that is definitely the second best option. Now there's also things you can buy to stop the most common running injuries. Something like to get a foot roller, really good. You can get those on Amazon. We'll link to that down below. Really help keep that plantar fasciitis at bay. Getting a foam roller to help massage those tired muscles. And then finally some resistance bands that you can do some really good basic strength training with. If you aren't quite feeling right, you're fatigued and things you just like I can't go out and I can't do my run today there's no problem at all to take a rest day no one's ever going to be able to follow a training plan perfectly all the way through quickly guys if you are finding this video useful please give it a like and answer today's question of the day what was your biggest running mistake and how did you overcome it let us know down in the comments and help out the running community and also if you could share it with one of your running friends that would be fantastic as well and help grow the channel right back to the video In recent times, myself and Sarah have become so passionate about cross training to help our running. But so many runners just avoid it because we just want to be out running. Now, people that have been following us for a while know I had a big cross training experiment at the start of the year and really saw just how important that is in maintaining fitness and even in improving our fitness over time in combination with some gym work, some strength and conditioning work as well. Now, most runners, they don't want to do this. It's boring and they'd much rather be out running. But the fact of the matter is these days it really helps to keep that injury at bay and also helps increase our fitness without adding that big fatigue and load on our body. Now running's a full impact sport. There's a lot of forces coming up through our body with every stride, especially if we're out there training on tarmac and things like that. So we can really help improve our fitness, improve our strength, keep those injuries at bay by adding a lot of cross training into your routine. Again, like so many of the things today, we'll add some links down below. Right, let's have a quick chat about shoes. Now we see kind of two people roughly. The first person buys a pair of shoes and completely wears them into the ground. They never change them. They try and run thousands and thousands of miles in them. Or is the other person that has a rotation of about 20, 30 different pairs of shoes. It's kind of crazy. For us, the sweet spot really is getting two pairs of shoes. If you can rotate these, use them side by side instead of back to back, they're gonna last a lot longer as well. So if you've got a little bit of cash to spend, something like the New Balance 1080 combined with the Nike Vaporfly version 2, we think that is a really solid rotation of shoes. You don't need much more than that. And also if you don't have that much money to spend, a little bit more cash conscious, then something like the Reebok Float Ride version 2 or version 3 combined with the Hoka Rocket X. There's some fantastic de deals on that shoe at the moment. Again, it's gonna set you up really well so you can do your nice and easy, steady runs in that everyday shoe. Only with the carbon plate shoes, you can do your tempos, your sessions, and your races as well.
And moving on, just a little quick reminder that none of us are professional athletes. We're not trying to earn our living through running. And I think some people take running so seriously, it's as if their whole life and family and career depends on it. But really running, it's just a hobby, should just be a little bit of fun. Please don't try and take it too seriously, at which point all the enjoyment comes out of it. Just go out there, enjoy your runs, look at the nature, look at the scenery, think how lucky we are to be out there training, having fun and enjoy it. That is the most important thing. It's the real thing that has helped me the most in helping me achieve everything I've done in those times and goals that I've managed to hit. Well guys, it's bonus tip time. And what I say here is running is so much about confidence, about feeling good about yourself. And I found no better thing than getting yourself a really cool Ben Parks running hat. It keeps the sun out your face, the rain out your face, the sweat out your face as well. You look good, you feel good, you wanna go out there and perform. Made of the best world-class materials. We ship them all out here. Well, my mum actually ships them all. It's a small family-run business. Go and check out the website, benparks.com. Get yourself one of the very best running hats. Go out there and show us you getting it done. Looking cool, feeling cool and smashing those PBs. So there we have it guys. Hope you found the video useful. As I said, please check out the website, benparks.com, the latest and greatest training plans. Thank you so, so much for everyone liking, sharing the video, the supporters on Patreon, and the supporters here on YouTube as well. We couldn't make these videos without you. We'll have to get some more training done in the build up to UTMB and also Berlin and Valencia Marathon. So much fun stuff. Like and share and subscribe and follow along with the journey. Hope your running is going well and we will see you in the next one.